Hello again as we enter our lasting tape, tape number six, part six. This is the last part of the sequence of the six tapes that we have been talking about autoimmune urine therapy, Shivambu, Amaroli, autotherapy, our personal private pharmacy. In this tape, let's go through some of the basic questions that are asked, and after that we will get involved with the bibliography of worldwide doctors that comment and utilize this urine therapy on a constant daily basis in all of their work. Common questions. Number one, is it true that urine is a toxic body waste and an excrement of the body? Urine is a blood byproduct and although it contains some body waste, urine is not toxic. In a healthy person, the toxins in urine constitute a very small percentage of total volume. The main purpose of the kidneys is to control the amount of blood and to maintain the pH balance of the blood in the body. The kidney filters all the blood 60 times a day, constantly removing the excess water and the ingredients that alter the pH balance of the blood. Question 2. Would it be harmful to put those toxins back into the body? The answer is the toxins found within urine are not enough to be toxic to the body from which it came. Anything that was in your blood cannot be harmful to the person where it came from. Had it been harmful, that person would have been dead. Also consider that urine you drink does not go directly to the bloodstream. It first goes to the digestive system where its ingredients are sorted out. The useful ones are used again or recycled and the toxins are rejected. When the level of toxins are high, the toxins stimulate the intestines into flushing themselves out to eliminate any stagnated excrement accumulating in the colon. Diarrhea or water waste ejected from the colon is then done. Question 3. What about doctors claiming that drinking urine will cause cirrhosis of the liver and harm or paralyze the kidneys? The answer to that is that they have a misconception with respect to drinking urine and what role the intestines play in urine therapy. They have really not been schooled on that. They have not tested it themselves. Remember the answer to the previous question and keep in mind that the organ that removes cellular feces from the blood is the liver. The liver removes this waste bile and it dumps it in the beginning of the small intestine to aid in the process of digestion. The urine a person drinks goes into the same spot where the liver discharges the cellular waste, but the toxin urine contains are a very small amount in comparison to what the liver dumps at the same site. Question 4. Couldn't we filter those toxins out of the urine before drinking it? I guess the toxins could be filtered out, but those toxins are necessary to stimulate a cleansing reaction in each individual. Those toxins are also necessary to vaccinate and protect the body from future illness. The amount of toxins found in the urine of each person is directly related to the amount of stagnated excrement in the colon. Sometimes these toxins are related to certain foods which are difficult to digest, requiring very strong acids that later on find their way into the bloodstream. The amount of preservatives a piece of meat has determines the type of bacteria required to digest it. That is why it is not healthy to eat meat or preserved meat products and cold cuts. This type of bacteria produces very strong acids to decompose flesh that is laying in the colon for too long while being digested. Those acids are toxic even to the intestines, therefore the body absorbs them and circulates them in the blood where they cause much less harm. Question number five. Is there a way to purify the body to improve the taste of urine before starting to drink it? 
10% of the people who start drinking urine, their own urine, will find it too sour or bitter, even when diluted, and may experience nausea, headaches, and other strong reactions before they get accustomed to consuming and start seeing any results. I ask you not to despair or give up. Remember, urine is a sample of what is flowing through your veins, and repulsive tasting urine should be a motivation to improve the internal conditions by what you eat rather than an excuse not to use urine therapy. When your internal conditions are too polluted, you need to purify the body before consuming. Drinking your own urine mixes with juice is one of the fastest ways to start. Can a girl drink her urine during the menstrual cycle? Yes, a girl can drink her urine during menstruation. The urethra and the vagina are two separate different organs. Furthermore, I can assure you that there is nothing in your menstruation fluid that can harm you if you accidentally drink a little of it mixed with the urine. With a little care, you can keep your urine separated for menstruation if you decide to continue drinking your urine during that menstruation cycle. If you are fasting, you must continue drinking your urine during the menstrual cycle. Next question. Can a person drink his urine while on medications? The answer to that is for all intents and purposes, the answer is no, because there is the remote possibility of overdosing on a particular medication by recycling the portion of it discharged in the urine. However, you need to differentiate between medications and hormonal supplements because hormone supplements can be taken while drinking your urine. If you choose to drink your urine while on a hormone supplement, you should frequently monitor your hor hormone intake because as the effective organ improves, the supplement you need has to be reduced accordingly. Next question, how come urine appears to be ineffective for some problems? When health problems are associated with mineral deficiencies, they are corrected recycling traces of the specific mineral found in urine. There are times when there is a chronic deficiency of one of minerals not found in your urine. Therefore, the problem remains the same. Yet 20 other conditions may improve. A diabetic person, for example, may need to take chromium for the cells to use blood sugar and vanadium to produce insulin. These supplements may be necessary to eradicate diabetes or any other sugar problems that did not improve with urine therapy. Next question. Can urine therapy help a child who wets the bed while he sleeps? Absolutely. Urine therapy can help with this problem because the condition is usually associated with a virus that relaxes the sphincter of the muscles that closes the urethra. The ultimate universal remedy is one of the procedures I would advise to use. Mixing a little urine in the morning with orange juice is another application that will help improve this condition if your child is having a problem taking urine. Next question. How many different ways can urine therapy be used? We find 14 different ways. First, massaging. Use it fresh and warm. Use it aged from a few hours to a few days in the sun to a few weeks. Always keeping it capped out of the oxygen. You use it concentrated by boiling at 75% off of the H2O down to only 25% left in a concentrated form so it can no longer ferment. Last, some say by strengthening by keeping it in glass and leaving it on a magnet north side up is most important. The second way of utilization is drinking. The third way is drops in the ears, eyes, and nose and must be taken fresh and warm. The fourth way is sniffing. The fifth way is soaking as with feet and hands. Sixth way is bathing. Add a couple of quarts to two gallons of saved liquid over a week. 
Put that into your bath water and soak for 15 to 20 minutes with no soap or shampoos being used. This is for softer skin and absorption back into the body. 7. Some people have it for a utilization by injection. 8. If you do, know, if you do not wish to drink urine and have a problem of drinking urine, you may put drops underneath your tongue. 9. Enema. 10. Clay pack mixture. 11. Urine charged by color with sunlight. 12. Use compresses soaked in urine. 13. Use it by way of gargling. And 14. Use it as a matter of douching, such as for candida. The next question is, how many harmful bacteria are there in urine? In a healthy person, none. It is no longer disputed that the urine from 90% of the population is almost entirely absent of all bacteria. That being said, it will be defined as urine being sterile. Consider urine is not in contact with anything until voided outside the body, and yet it has substances which kills bacteria. The last 10% can be said that those microorganisms can be found which may be caused by past illnesses or infections of the kidney or urinary system. Next, doesn't urine taste horrible? Well, that depends on you. That fully depends on the foods you consume and the way you drink. The thought of taste is either preordained, preconceived, or a condition reflex or thought. It is considered the first time you drank an alcoholic beverage such as gin or scotch, you consider that ugly. But later, it was a craving. Then consider, as you will soon find, that when certain foods which are acidic in nature and makes your pH well below 7, your taste will be most intolerant to normal. Coffee, meat, alcohol, certain cheese, sugar, olives, and flour products will add to this acidic, unpalatable taste. Next question. Can the effects of urine therapy be assumed a product of suggestion? No. Consider the same response. Same response will be shown by animals who have no suggestive response. Next, if urine therapy was so popular before, why are people not utilizing its benefits as much now? Generally speaking, it was the covering, lying, and diseducation to keep control of the public's life finances. With development of culture, allopathic medicine, and the advent of ed education by the new scientific all-knowing, to say that it is only a waste or toxic excretion and poison to the body is a total sham. Its use was lost over the multitudes of generations because of this lie. Now that the public is becoming educated by way of the Internet and the debts that are becoming public knowledge, those who find this therapy are utilizing miracles of use without cost daily and living in total health. Next, which illness is urine therapy effective or not effective? The answer to that is it affects all illness. Urine therapy can be applied for all illness and at all times. There may be, however, in some cases, have a need for extra caution and attention in some of the incurable diseases. Next, are there any contraindications in the use of urine therapy? You must pay attention to the acidity and pus of the blood. Test the pH of the blood with litmus papers as we have given you if you have purchased our complete project. And if pus is found in the urine, it would be best to only ingest a few drops under the tongue. There are no known reported negative side effects on the use of therapy in the entire world. 
Urine, the Holy Water by Harold W. Tights, page 41, A. Jones Publication, Australia. That was a quote from that book. Next, can one use urine therapy for preventive means? Definitely. That's the most important position of urine therapy. Do not only reverse existing problems, but to not incur any future problems and to keep good health in hand. That's our goal. Next question. How, in fact, does urine therapy work? Very well, incredibly well, say some. It's a miracle. I quote, the exact mechanism behind urine therapy isn't fully understood. This shouldn't come as any surprise. When it comes to achieving perfect health, we are not much further along than we were a hundred years ago. And just how well does urine therapy work? Honestly, it probably works too well. It works so well that you will probably start seeing a lot of negative stories about it in the next couple years." Unquote. And that was by Dr. G. Williams. Next question, what is urine? Urine is not a toxic substance. It is directly filtered blood. It is plasma, nothing else. Next question, why is it particularly recommended to drink the morning urine and only the middle one-third? The full collection of usable benefiting elements are available in the morning. Most useful vital substances are found in the urine after a full night's sleep, such as hormones, enzymes, vitamins, minerals, etc. Not fully used by the body, and ready for reintroduction. What is considered, in fact, early morning? After you go to sleep and two hours after your body starts creating all of these into your system. So but four, if you go to sleep at 11, 12 o'clock, by 4 o'clock, if you get up at 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, that would be considered your first morning void. Next question. Should I stop taking my supplements during urine therapy? Not at all, but you may reduce intake. Consider that if you take your vitamins and minerals, you're only absorbing 20 to 25 percent of it. But now that you're reinstituting it and regaining it back into your body, you do not have to take those vitamins the next day. You can alternate some vitamins one day, different vitamins the next day, so that each and every day you will have a total rotating contingency of everything that you need, and your reabsorption will save you an awful lot of money on vitamins and minerals. Not at all, but uh, you may reduce the intake, like I say, as far as the, your, your supplements. Generally speaking, there is no problem whatsoever. In fact, the consumption of the supplements is generally known that only 20% is used, like I said. Therefore, you have a more concise use of the supplements when reintroduced. You may even consider reducing the consumption to every other day if you use urine therapy daily. Our last question takes us to how sugar and sweeteners can ruin our health. How do they ruin our health? Or can they ruin our health? Well, let's consider this. This has been written by Paul A. Stitt in a book called Beating the Food Giants. He says, let's assume a person is used to having one bowl of cornflakes for breakfast. Then one morning he tries a new cereal, perhaps cornflakes coated with sugar. Because of this processed sweetener stimulating his appetite, he finds himself now eating two or three bowls. Wow, he says to himself, this stuff is really good. I can't stop eating it. And that's exactly what happens when the factories start putting in all of the sugar ingredients into our foods. This way, on a daily basis, on a one-and-one, -one, each person takes three or four bowls or three or four candies instead of just one, and before you know it, we become fat. 
we become sluggish. In fact, let's take, for instance, Lick the Sugar Habit by Nancy Appleton, Ph.D. This is what she says about how sugars are commencing on our body. Sugar can suppress the immune system. Sugar can upset the body's mineral balance. Sugar can cause hyperactivity, anxiety, concentration, difficulties, and crankiness in children. Sugar can cause drowsiness and decreased activity in children. Sugar can adversely affect children's school grades. Sugar can produce a significant rise in triglycerides. Sugar contributes to the weakened defense mechanism of bacterial infection. Sugar can cause kidney damage. Sugar can reduce healthful high-density lipoproteins. Sugar can promote an elevated or harmful low-density lipoproteins. Sugar may lead to chromium deficiency. Sugar can cause copper deficiency. Sugar interferes with the absorption of calcium and magnesium. Sugar may lead to breast, ovaries, prostate, and rectum cancer. Sugar can cause colon cancer and an increased risk in women. Sugar can be a risk factor in gallbladder cancer. Sugar can increase fasting levels of glucose. Sugar can weaken eyesight. Sugar rises the level of neurotransmitter called serotonin, which can narrow blood vessels. Sugar can cause hypoglycemia. Sugar can produce an acidic stomach. Sugar can raise adrenaline levels in children. Sugar malabsorption is possible in those with functional bowel disease. Sugar can speed the aging process, causing wrinkles and gray hair. Sugar can lead to alcoholism. Sugar can promote tooth decay. Sugar can cons contribute to weight gain and obesity. High intake of sugar increases the risk of Crohn's disease and ulcerated colitis. Sugar can cause a raw inflamed intestinal tract in persons with gastric or duodenal ulcers. Sugar can cause arthritis. Sugar can cause asthma. Sugar can cause candidus or yeast infection. Sugar can lead to the formation of gallstones. Sugar can lead to the formation of kidney stones. Sugar can cause appendicitis. Sugar can exasperate and exacerbate the symptoms of multiple sclerosis. Sugar can uh, indirectly cause hemorrhoids. Sugar can cause varicose veins. Sugar can elevate glucose and insulin response in oral contra contra contraception uses. Sugar can lead to periodontal disease. Sugar can contribute to uh, osteoporosis. Sugar contributes to saliva activity. Sugar can cause decrease in insulin sensitivity. Sugar leads to decreased glucose tolerance. Sugar can decrease growth hormone. Sugar can increase cholesterol. Sugar can increase systolic blood pressure. Sugar can change the structure of protein, cause interference with protein absorption. Sugar can cause food allergies. Sugar can contribute to diabetes. Sugar can cause toxemia during pregnancy. Sugar can contribute to eczema in children. Sugar can cause cardiovascular disease. Sugar can impair the structure of DNA. Sugar can cause cataracts. Sugar can cause emphysema. Sugar can cause arteriosclerosis. Sugar can cause free radical formation in the bloodstream. Sugar lowers the enzyme's ability to function. Sugar can cause a tissue elasticity and function. That he can cause lo loss of tissue elasticity and function. Sugar can cause liver cells to divide, increase the size of the liver. Sugar can increase the amount of fat in the liver. Sugar can increase kidney size and produce pathological changes in the kidney. Sugar can overstress the pancreas and can cause massive damage. Sugar can cause constipation. Sugar can cause myopia or nearsightedness. Sugar can compromise the lining of the capillaries. Sugar can cause tendons to become brittle. Sugar can cause headaches, including migraines. Sugar can cause an increase in delta, alpha, and theta brain waves, which can alter the ability to think clearly. Sugar can cause depression. Sugar can increase insulin responses to those consuming high-sugar diets compared to low-sugar diets. 
Sugar increases bacterial fermentation in the colon. Sugar can cause hormonal imbalance. Sugar can cause blood platelets adhesiveness, which can cause blood clots. Now, out of all the things that we eat and drink, what is the most impressive part of sugar or the most impressive factor that we take inside our body that has massive amounts of sugar? Well, let's just consider soda pop. And let's go directly to what we have tested and find that can be done with Coca-Cola. Did you know that in many states the highway patrol carries two gallons of coke in the trunk to remove blood from the highway after a car accident? Did you know that if you took a T-bone steak in a bowl of coke, it will be gone in two days? Did you know that if you want to clean a toilet, pour a can of Coca-Cola in the toilet bowl, let the real thing sit for one hour, then flush clean? Did you know that citric acid in coke removes stains from vitreous china? Did you know that to remove rust spots from chrome on car bumpers, rub the bumper with a crumbled up piece of Reynolds wrap aluminum foil dipped in Coca-Cola? It'll take the rust right off. To clean e corrosion from car battery terminals, pour a can of Coca-Cola over the terminals to bubble away the corrosion. To loosen a rusted bolt, Apply a, a cloth soaked in Coca-Cola to the rusted bolt for several minutes. To bake a moist ham, empty a can of Coca-Cola into the baking pan. Wrap the ham in aluminum foil and bake 30 minutes before the ham is finished. Remove the foil, allowing the drippings to mix with the Coke for a sumptuous brown gravy. Did you want to get rid of or remove grease from clothes? Empty a can of Coke into a load of greasy clothes, add detergent, and run through a regular cycle. The Coca-Cola will help loosen up grease stains. It will also clean road haze from your windshield. The active ingredient in Coke is phosphoric acid. It has a pH of 2.8. It will dissolve a nail in about four days. pH average is 7. Can you imagine we've gone to six and a half, six, five and a half, five, four and a half, four, three and a half, three, two and a half? We're at 2.8. It is as acidic as you can get, and that's what you pump into your stomach? To carry Coca-Cola syrup concentrate, a commercial truck must use the hazardous material cards reserved for highly corrosive material. The distributors of Coke have been using it to clean the engines of their trucks for about 20 years. So drink up. No joke. Think that Coke and other soft drinks do to your teeth on a daily basis. Just think of what they do. A tooth will dissolve in a cup of Coke in 24 to 48 hours if left there. Yeah. Just think. Things go better with Coke. Sugar. I'm telling you, think about what it does to your blood. If some of you are afraid of drinking urine, your blood is the one who, who radically tries to change what you throw into the system. Your God-given gift is fighting every single second of every day, trying to put the pH in balance when you start throwing things like this into your system. Reconsider what you're drinking. Reconsider what you're eating. And after a fashion, if you want to put your body back into a, a graceful way of living, if you take on the therapy on a daily basis, you will be bettering your life, your health, and a very long future. Please forward to the very end. We are finished with this side of the tape and flip over for the last side. Well, hello again and welcome again. We are on... Part 6, tape number 6 of the urine therapy. Now let's talk lifestyle changes. Exercise. If you need to lose weight, you must take 60 minutes every day of some type of exercise. Walking is the best exercise that you can get, no matter what age, whether you're 9, 19, or 90. Walking is the most important factor of your life. Walking you should do either one hour a day 
and it doesn't have to be all at once. It could be 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the afternoon, a half hour at night, or it could be all at one time or a total of three miles per day. Work up to this slowly so you can combine several periods to reach this 60 minute period as I said. You do not have to get involved with gyms. That whole pro high profile exercising is not the best all the time for all people. By sleeping you must have one hour outside in the sun and that increases melatonin. You must sleep in pitch dark to maximize the melatonin. Go to bed about 10 p.m. to improve adrenal functions. Every minute before midnight is really equal to like sleeping 10 minutes after midnight. You must have one hour of sunshine every day and that's preferably from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. You shouldn't have glasses or contacts for at least one hour to maximize the wavelength exposure to the retina of the sunlight. Full spectrum lights in winter is especially important. In electromagnetic fields we must avoid electric razors, AC-DC transformers, electric blankets, waterbed heaters, Auto, automatic car door openers in your pocket. All watches unless no battery is present. And of course, no cell phones. You have no idea of the, of the problems that the electric magnetic field stresses on the body. Drugs, of course, minimize or avoid whenever possible. And especially troublesome are antibiotics, and anti-ulcer drugs, birth control pills, or estrogen and menopause pills. Be careful of most multivitamins generally that are not necessary. You must take good bacteria or probiotics consistently every time you have an antibiotic you should be taking probiotics to replace the damaging effects of the antibiotics. Avoid iron unless your serum ferritin is decreased. If supplements smell bad, don't take them. Listen to your body. If any food or supplement makes you nauseous or makes you sick in some way, stop eating it or taking it immediately. You must also avoid microwave food and water. You must avoid root canals and if you have them, take them out. You must avoid silver fillings and if you have them it is absolutely necessary to take out your silver fillings. Again your silver fillings are 50 percent mercury. I, I told you in these tapes that a medical doctor, an allopathic doctor's average lifespan now by the insurance companies is 52 years old and we go to them and say can you help us well consider a dentist the insurance files right now the lifespan of dentists are 50 years old why they have been having problems on even working with this substance of putting it in and taking that out I personally have known that my dentist retired early because he did not want to involve himself on taking out silver fillings. Can you imagine? Okay, fluoride, toothpaste, do not use it. Unclean counters must be used, must be cleaned with bleach or Shackley Basic G. Immunizations, forget it. You have no idea how many immunizations, vaccines, have mercury in them or come off of the uh, adrenals or other organs of pigs. Non-coated aluminum cookware. Teflon coated cookware is less than op optimal but is acceptable unless it is chipped. But stay away from aluminum of all kind in your cooking. Avoid breathing from upper chest. You must breathe deeply all the time so that you're energetic consistently. You're living. You're a living organism and put that oxygen back in your system. 
Constipation. And as you know, we've talked about constipation consistently through these tapes. Constipation is a problem of the colon, and the problem of the colon is where disease and cancer starts. You need two or three bowel movements per day. If you eat three times a day, you should go three times a day with your bowels. If you eat twice a day, then you should move your bowels twice a day. Quickly eating your food is totally something that you should avoid. Chew your food thoroughly. Make sure that the enzyme structure becomes instantaneous as you first start with the saliva in your mouth. And getting on to antiperspirants, you must check all of your antiperspirants. Do they have aluminum or do they not? If they have, do not use it. Can you imagine this is such a tender, special place under the skin, under the arms, straight directly with the skin that you're putting aluminum into, and this aluminum is getting directly into your body. And now let us phase into the bibliography. You will find in this bibliography that it is not just in one part of the world, but in, in every single country throughout the world, there's tremendous amounts of of knowledge about urine therapy that has passed down through the generations. This bibliography is even in the Holy Bible. So let's start with the Holy Bible, King James edition. Read John 4.14 and you will find it reverts to urine therapy. And especially the one that I like most of all is Proverbs 5.15. Drink from your own cistern. Tara Ike from Australia, she writes on the miracles of urine therapy. Homer Smith, De Urina, that was written in the journals of the American Medical Association. Next, Ingeborg Almen, she writes on the healing power of auto urine therapy. Stanislaus Brzezinski, from Texas, USA writes on antineoplastin A in cancer therapy. Dr. N. N. Dalwadi, he writes on Shivambu from Mumbai, India. Donald K., he writes on antibacterial activity of human urine in the Journal of Clinical Investigation. Dr. Swami Sankardevan Zaraswati, he writes on Amaroli from Bihar, India. Dr. H. Duncan, he writes on gonorrhea, its prevention and cure by autotherapy or urine therapy. This was written in the medical record. Dr. Charles Duncan, USA, he writes on autotherapy. B. L. Nalvadi, he writes on the Auto urine, nectar of life. That was taken in the lecture at the 20th World Congress of Natural Medicines in Madras, India. Dr. J. Beanstalk and T. B. Tomasi writes on rheumatoid factor in urine. This was at the proceedings from the 4th Pan American Congress on rheumatology, Mexico City, Mexico. Dr. C. W. M. Wilson and A. Lewis writes on autoimmune therapy against the human allergic disease, a physiological self-defense factor. This was written in Medical Hypothesis. R. O. Faulkner writes on the ancient Egyptian coffin texts in England. R. V. Carla Carr and Arli Raghuvanshi writes on auto urine therapy from Mumbai, India. Samuel A. B. Mercer writes on the pyramid texts and the pyramid texts with urine therapy input. Next, Michael H. Briggs, urea as a protein supplement. Next, Nexus Magazine writes on urine therapy 
versus skin cancer and also urine therapy a a natural alternative was written all in the Nexus magazines next Dr. S. N. S. Patil writes on integrated approach of urine therapy from Kolhapur, India. John Rebich writes on the urine cure, treat yourself therapy, Austria. Gada Ramiklal writes on urine therapy in rheumatoid arthritis and also urine therapy in kidney failure. She writes from the Mavir Clinic in Malad, India. G. Kolata writes on the surgery on fetuses reveals they heal without scars. That was written in the New York Times. While Sari McKenzie and Bondenlos writes on urine metabolism in man written in the journal of clinical investigations m javid writes on urea in intracranial surgery found in the journal of neurosurgery and also effect of urea on cerebral fluid pressure in human subjects written in the journal of the american medical association R.J. Feldman and H.I. Maybach writes on the peritaneous penetration of hydrocortisone with urea found in the archives of dermatology. Gunnar Swanbeck writes on the urea in the treatment of dry skin. Department of Dermatology, Gothenburg, Sweden. J.U. Schlingel writes on bacterial effect of urea written in the journal of urology e bello writes on the origin the origin therapy of wounds with urine practiced traditional with peruvian indians and explained and justified this was found in the revista medica de veracruz mexico it is a magazine H. W. Smith, De Urina, found in the Journal of the American Medical Association. K. B. Bjorg Nesho, written on the effect of human urine on the tuberculo bacilli, found in the effects of various urine constituents, Acta Scandinavia. Immunotolerance was found in the Historical Prospective Physician's Handbook. M. Mills and T. France, Melatonin Supplementation from Early Morning Autoimmune Drinking, found in the Medical Hypothesis. S. Kent, DHEA, Miracle Drug in Urine. J. S. James, DHEA, Mystery AIDS Treatment, found in urine. This is located in the AIDS Treatment News. DJ Sandwies writes on the effect of urine extracts on peptic ulcers, found in the American Journal of Digestive Diseases. H.H. H. Thompson writes on H11 for cancer in urine found in the British Medical Journal GJW Olrenshaw writes on observations on dosage of H11 extract found in Medical World in London PM Manucci and A Dangelo writes on urokinase basic and clinical aspects. A. A. Cordero writes on cancer cures in 12 ways found in Science of Nature Healing Center in Asia, Philippines. The Chinese Association of Urine Therapy 
writes on the correct application of urine therapy. Linda Clark, in her book Get Well Naturally, writes on autoimmune therapy, the Duncan method, urine therapy. Cohen van der Kroon writes on the Golden Fountain, the complete guide to urine therapy. He's from Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Devendra Vora writes on health in your hands from Bombay, India. Dr. G. P. Malakroff writes on healing powers, book three on biorhythm and urine therapy from St. Petersburg, Russia. Dr. William Hitt writes on urine therapy clinics in Mexico. Dr. Sashi Patil and Dr. Sarang Patil writes on integrated approach of urine therapy, a long-term pr prospective study. Professor Dr. Ryochi Nakao writes on Miracle of Auto Urine Therapy, the Fountain of Health and Beauty, from Kyoto, Japan. Dr. C. P. Metao, Miracles of Urine Therapy, he writes from New Delhi, India. Dr. Paragji D. Desai writes on Shivambu, a cure guide to treatment and diet, from Bombay, India. Dr. Neela Segfi writes on Shivambu, urine therapy, Calcutta, India. Dr. Arthur L. Pauls, D.O., writes on Shivambu Kalpa, Life Science Institute from England, and from Fort Pierce, Florida. Dr. A. B. Das writes on a treaty and directory on auto urine therapy, Nature Cure and Yoga Research Center, Calcutta, India. Dr. Weinhausen, Urea, its possible role in auto urine therapy, Goa, India. Dr. Charles H. Duncan, urine as an auto therapeutic remedy. Quique Paladino writes on urine therapy drinking from thy own cistern. Dr. Beatrice Barnett writes on urine therapy it may save your life from Rudoso, New Mexico and formerly Water of Life Institute, Hollywood, Florida. Dr. John F. O'Quinn writes on urine therapy a self-healing through intrinsic medicine. S. J. Kulkarni writes on urotherapy a sure cure for all diseases Lecture at the 20th World Congress of Natural Medicines in Madras, India. Carmen Thomas, a very special juice. She wrote this book and in one year sold over 750,000 copies in Germany alone. Dr. John W. Armstrong, The Water of Life, from England. Dr. G. K. Thakar wrote on the wonders of uropathy, urine therapy as a universal cure, Bombay, India. Also from the World Conference on World Therapy, many, many structures, many writings were brought from Gersfeld, Germany in May 1999. Martha M. Christie, Your Own Perfect Medicine. The Incredible, Proven, Natural, Miracle Cure That Medical Science Has Never Revealed, Scottsdale, Arizona. Dr. B. V. Kari from the Hindu Colony, Mumbai, India. I have given you this bibliography on tape just to justify again exactly how many different people in what different paths of life they have that have known 
and have used and have explained to others how greatly advantageous this specific therapy can be for you in your life. They're not only from just certain parts of the world, they're throughout. They are true, they are dedicated, they are all known that this therapy works. And now it is up to you whether you want to use this therapy or not. You may not want to get involved now, but someday down the road, one of your family may be critically sick. Your child may be involved in an accident of some kind, and you need to do something immediate. It may just be scrapes and cuts and bruises that you can take care of immediately yourself. Or it may be something of an effect that you or your family may be given walking papers by one of the allopathic doctors that have worked on you for the last three, four, five months or years, and they finally say, you know, I just can't find anything more. Where we are in our lives, we have nothing more to give you. I highly suggest, and I hate to say this, but go home, put your papers together, and get ready. That is not the stopping place. Consider what you want. It's up to you. I cannot tell you to do this. I can only tell you that that's what I will do. And at one time in my life, yes, I was a diabetic. I did have problems of prostate. I did have heart palpitations. All that is past me. I know this works. I thank you very much for listening to this last six hours of tape. And I thank you for buying this specific course. Remember, I'm only a researcher. I am not a medical doctor. But I do know what I've seen. It's worthy of being seen. It's worthy of the knowledge. And I know that its use, or at least the education, the readings and listening that you have just gone through, will change your life. I thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Goodbye and good luck.